Hi everyone, so it's a fresh new week. Today is Monday and in my last video I told you that on Sunday I was going to be getting on with my assignment and hopefully finishing it and I asked you to motivate me. But guess what? It was Sunday, I was motivated and I've got 400 words left of my assignment to do and then it's done. How amazing is that? I was really motivated. I got on it. I started typing, I found all my references that I needed to find. I was on the ball yesterday. I'm so proud of myself. So I do have 400 words left out of 3,000. I really smashed this one out, guys. I'm just hoping and praying that what I've written makes sense and it matches the assignment brief. So I do need to go back and change that if needed, but I've got until April before I have to submit it. So I've got plenty of time to perfect this one and get the grade I really, really want. So I'm chuffed. I just thought I'd update you. Today um, is Monday, I've just said this, but I have a day off and I've just been for a training session at our Works Education Centre. If you don't already know, I work in sexual health. So in sexual health, I'm a healthcare assistant and we usually work alongside the nurses and the doctors and help where needed. But now they're training us to actually see patients alone and do the testing alone as long as the patient doesn't have any symptoms. So they're training us to use the computer system, and how to manage patients, how to assess patients properly and give them the best care possible properly in a sexual health setting and assessing those risks and how we manage those risks. To be honest, the computer side of things, I am on that already because I actually taught myself the Excelica system that we have, which is a really, really frustrating, complicated system. So today's session was really good, really loved it. We had an amazing nurse go through it all with me and teach me everything and yeah. Also, I found out something really interesting actually today in today's session. Some of you may or may not know, as women, when we reach 25, we have to go for regular smear tests every three years. This is a spicle smear test which t tests for those initial cancer cells forming, which is going to hopefully prevent cancer in the future. Every three years we have to be tested. It's not a pleasant experience, but to be honest, I've never had a problem with mine and I find mine fine um, and in and out and no bother to me, but I know some people can find it a little bit traumatic and a little bit painful and uncomfortable, a little bit embarrassing and awkward, and that sort of puts people off. But anyway, sorry, sidetracked. I found out today that if you are diagnosed with HIV, you have to be, you have to go for your smears every year instead of every, every three years. And I'm assuming that's because you're more at risk because HIV reduces the immune response and things like that. So it just brings your risk up a little bit more. That's my assumption. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that if you had HIV, you had to have your smear tests every year. So that I'm actually going to look up today because that's really fascinated me. And that was a new piece of information that I have to share with you, of course, because everything I learn, you're going to learn. <laughs> you guys are learning with me. It was a great day. I got a free pen and a free bag. I know. Let me sh actually let me show you my free bag. Oh, I've got my certificates as well from my e-learning. So this is my free bag. I know, I haven't used a drawstring bag for ages, but this is it, my fancy free umbrella bag. So all in all, it's a winning day. Um, tomorrow we have a couple of hours, we're back on the policy and politics tomorrow. Wednesday we've got an all day, nine till 6.30 session of physiology. And then Thursday we have a respiratory skills session, so I will show you this. It's gonna be a really great week and I can't wait to get stuck into it this week. So today is Wednesday. Yesterday we had our policy and politics lecture, which to be honest, it was a good lecture. It was all about A&E admissions and discharges and all about discharge planning. And something really, really interesting, I always pick up these random facts from these lectures and it's all I take from these lectures. I don't know why. Last week I told you about the random fact about the west side and the east side and where people live. This week I've got something really interesting to tell you. I didn't know this, this was brand new information information to me. This is another general knowledge fact for your quizzes hopefully, but basically I find out, found out today that when a patient gets admitted to hospital, 
they're only the 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 hospital is only funded for four days of that patient's stay. Once it's been past four days, that funding's no longer available for that patient. Then the hospital has to find that money from somewhere to support and fund that patient if that makes sense. So you've got all these patients that are staying weeks and months and whatever because they can't be discharged yet, it's not safe, or they acquire an infection or something so they've got a longer stay, and that hospital no longer has funding. So then there's gonna be all this excess funding that's having to come out, out of their own sort of money pot. So yeah, so I didn't know that, and that shocked me a little bit. I'm not too sure why, but then I thought, oh, and it doesn't make sense when you're out working on the wards. You've always got the bed manager on the phone. They want discharges, discharges. They want the patients in, out, in, out as fast as possible. So that was really interesting. I didn't know that before. And then today, so today we had policy and politics in the morning again, and then we had the rest of our COPD patient physiology lectures. This was the, the last of our COPD patient and we are going to be moving on to our cardiovascular patient. So I'm really looking forward to our next patient, our next case study, learning some new things about the cardiovascular system and heart failure and all of that. Really, really excited to get stuck into this third case study. Can you believe we are halfway through our physiology teachings? How scary is that? That means we are that step closer to our exam, which is terrifying. But the exam is looking a bit better now. Now, as we're going along and we're learning more and more and we keep repeating over and over, I'm sort of looking at things and thinking, okay, actually, this exam might not be that bad. If I can concentrate on the high marks physiology, I think I'll pass it. Fingers crossed. That's what I'm hoping for. I also, I told you all that I had my supervisor meeting and that was today for my ACP dissertation slash not dissertation, it's called ACP. It was really chuffed that I was so organised, I literally had everything, it was in my folder, I had my printout, everything and she was like yeah, yeah. So I think she was happy that I'm a little bit organised and I've got my question and I've got all my research and I think what I've chosen and my question is okay, but I just need to go over my research and make sure that the research is actually answering all of my question. This is gonna be the tough bit now because there's not gonna be research out there that's actually asking my question. So I need to look at the research and hopefully it's gonna answer my question in a good section of the research that they're doing about something else, but it's related to my topic, does that make sense? So I'm thinking I'm gonna have to look at the evidence again, the research again, and my question again. Hopefully, I don't need to change it too much because I'm so set on doing this topic, but I'm gonna have a look at it again over the next week and hopefully, come to a, a final decision because I really need to get on and do the rest of the work with this. Otherwise, it's just gonna make me panic because you know I'm organized and prioritize everything. So yeah, but this doesn't have to be a submitted till October. So I have got time. I just wanna make sure that I'm doing each bit well ahead of time so that I don't get caught up and don't get left behind and don't rush and panic towards the end, okay. So I am about to apply for my very, very first job as a newly qualified nurse. I know. I don't qualify till November but everybody's starting to apply and get a job position now. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to apply. I've gone onto NHS jobs. I've found one general practice nursing position that are taken on newly qualified nurses and it's less than two miles from my house. How more perfect can you get? I am really, really excited about this. It's gonna be my first job, and if not anything, it's gonna be a good experience to do the application form, hopefully get an interview and experience an interview. And if they don't wanna take me on yet because it's too soon, at least I'm gonna get that experience. So I'm really excited. I've got my screen up here, look. There it is. And there's that button here. It says, submit application, are you ready? Oh god, there's another thing. Are you sure you want to submit? Okay, here we go. Are you ready? That's it. It's done. I've submitted it. 
Thank you for completing your application form. If you have been successfully shortlisted, you should hear back from the recruiter soon. That's my first one. It's my first application, so I haven't got high hopes, but I'm just really excited and I'm glad that you can all share that experience with me and that moment with me of submitting my first application form. And it's all becoming very, very real now. Hands up who's excited. Oh, I'm so excited. Save application form as profile, save. <laughs> because I don't want to go through all of that application form again. This will arrive, yeah, do that. Okay, so I've saved that application form. So hopefully the next job I find, I don't have to go through that whole process again. It will just automatically save and I can submit. Oh my God, this is nerve wracking. What if I get an interview? Oh my God. I'm terrible. If anyone's watched my previous videos on my interview tips, I said at the very start, I'm terrible at interviews. Uh, my mind goes blank. I get really nervous during an interview. But there are some tips and things in that vlog. So oh, I'm just really, really scared now. I'm going to have to do my research, have a look at some things for GP practice and applying to GP practice and just make sure I know about the practice that I'm applying to as well because it's always good if you do your research about the place that you're going to work at so you've got a bit of background, bit of knowledge and hopefully gain some brownie points <laughs> so yeah um, so that's it guys, I've applied fingers crossed I'll let you know as soon as I know of course so that's it for now. Tomorrow we have a respiratory skills session, so I shall take you all with me and show you what we're going to be doing in respiratory skills tomorrow. And again, it's going to be our one of our last ever sessions, skill sessions. Everything's the last. It's always very emotional. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. So today is Valentine's Day and I'm single, so um, I woke up a little bit sad and little bit anti-Valentine's but when I opened my room door over there I woke up to a lovely bunch of things being left outside my room a teddy bear chocolate flowers and a card my housemates have gathered together and got me something and it was just so cute I was just like oh okay Valentine's Day is a little bit cute but today I had my respiratory skills session at university with my favourite people we had a mannequin that had a tracheostomy and we had to just manage that airway take it out clean it we changed the dressing and practice doing that. We had to look at different masks for the oxygen. We had to look at the suction machine and how to use the suction machine and what it should be set on when you're cleaning out tracky. So that was really, really good. And oh, and a chest drain. I saw a chest drain. I've never seen a chest drain before. So that was really, really interesting to see that and actually understand why a chest drain would be used. So basically you use a chest drain on a patient if they've got um, a buildup of fluid that's not going anywhere or a buildup of air, like just air filled in that space. And um, it's obviously causing them problems and it needs to be drained out. So a drain would be put into the chest to remove it. So it was really interesting to go through all of that because I'd never seen any of that before. Obviously I've seen the, va the masks and the different valves for the oxygen, but I hadn't seen ackies before, chest strains, and that was new to me. So I was really excited, really happy that I did that. I took a little couple of, ob obviously, the obligatory selfies in the skill sessions rooms. So I'll show you those next, but I just want to say a massive thank you for tuning in. As always, that is it from me for now. I shall see you next week. Bye.